Welcome back to another episode from Custom to Camper. Today we're going to have a go at fitting the double seat swivel from Custom Shop Designs. I'm going to take the double seat out. I will take the headrest off when we come to actually remove the seat, but I'm just going to undo the uh, bolts for this. There are three bolts. At the, two at the front and one at the side here which are a T55 star bit you need for that and then there is an 18 mil nut on the far corner by the handbrake so simply four uh, bolts three three bolts one nut and then I'm just going to also take the bolt out for the seat belt here so that's out of the way so that we can get the double seat out here's the first one for the seat belt and then inside there is a T55 here, T55 there, T55 there, and nut there. So now we've we've done that. That wasn't too bad. Some of those bolts were really tight. I think they've obviously been put in with an air or impact gun air, air gunner when they were done in the factory. It wasn't too bad. Now I'm not sure if we're using the same bolts to refit it, but I will clean out the the holes and also get the bolts cleaned up and greased, ready for when if they go back in. One thing I did notice was that the seat belt is actually a T50 bit, not a uh, T55 as I first thought. I'm going to clean it up now, it is dusty and dirty. The Hoover's run out, that's done well. We've now done this. I'm sure when it dries it's going to look as dirty as it was before but the swivel base is going to be put onto here so hopefully it will look fine. We're going to unbox it now and read the instructions. We're going to unbox the sweet we're going to unbox the seat swivel now 
from Custom Shop Designs. Word of warning with it, it says that it's 32 kilos in weight, which it is. Um, if you've got a bad back, be careful when moving it because it is awkward and incredibly heavy. There's also some bits poking out the bottom as well, so just be careful when moving it. They have the test report from Millbrook uh, Proving Ground. Just wait for the train to go past. There's the, um, the testing certificate to say that it is up to standard, so I'll keep hold of that. And then the instructions. So, tip on man, removed the seat and I didn't bother reading the instructions, but I think we're, I think we're all right. So it says to remove the three torque bolts, which are the T55 bolts. One, two, three, four. It's actually told me to remove three, but I've actually got four holding the seat in place. So that's not quite right. And then the M12 nut, which is correct. It says lift the seat and move it to the back of the vehicle, which we've done, leaving the seat belt still attached. I don't agree with that because I think it's just going to get in the way. So I decided to remove that before reading this anyhow. And now with a sharp retractable knife or similar, I'm going to use that to cut the floor mat along the lines. And I'm just going to show this on the camera. I have taken a picture of it, so hopefully it will feature in the video as well. I'm not sure whether you can see this or not. But that's got to do a cut down here and I think along there. But we'll look at that in a moment, read the instructions properly and we'll film that step. Where's the electrical, the electrical things underneath yeah. somewhere? The electrical is here. Yeah. What's underneath it? That's fine because we can lift it, we can lift that up. Do you want to cut it? No, you can cut it. Just going. Oh, I'm gonna get a piece piece of wood. What for? Just slide underneath it. So you're gonna come along there. I'll just turn a straight line then. That's just tidy. Oh, and then tidy up the phone. That'll be fine because the phone will squash, won't it? What do you want to try and do? Try and do that corner because that's. Back in and then that should squash. Mm -hmm. That 
it should do. Yeah. Okay. So cut. Where's the sharp? I don't know. I'm going to cut the water. Right, yeah, so we done it up, cross, done, done. Yep, okay. There. And remove. Trim down the first. This was the section that we've had to cut out. As you will have seen, we slid a piece of wood underneath there so that when we were cutting, we didn't go through to the cable conduit that is underneath. As you can see when this is removed, there is some cables there. And there is also a cable run just here out of sight. So put something underneath there, ready to cut. We're now going to have a go at the bolts that we've got to shorten. I'm going to have a look at doing that now. Having read the instructions where it said that I need to trim down the three floor studs, I worked out I only needed to trim down the one stud, the non-threaded stud, and you're about to see me have an attempt at doing this. It is a high tensile stud, and I found it incredibly difficult to cut through it. I tried the junior hacksaw, I then tried a air tool with a metal blade in it and that took a little bit out but then it blunted it straight away. The only way I then got through it properly was to use the air grinder as you will see later on in the video. You need to take enough of this bolt off to make it 14 mil, but not too much so make sure that you do double check your measurements before you start cutting. <laughs> got the seat base in as a real faff. Had to grind one of the bolts back a bit to get in the locator. So over there underneath we had to grind some of that back. But we're now in, not bolted down yet, but that's the next thing to do, which we'll film doing that. In the picture you can see the stud isn't quite fitting into the mounting hole on the swivel. So in the end, I ended up putting a angle onto the stud, which allowed us to get the seat base straight onto the locating hole, and then that worked much better. Here I'm struggling to get the washer through the hole. The hole hasn't been deburred once it's been painted so that the washer is incredibly tight. That was my mistake, I should have actually checked before, but that's something just to be mindful if you are fitting this, that the washer goes through there without any problems. We finally got the swivel seat in, it was a little bit of a faff. Um, various things didn't quite line up and I had to grind an angle on one of the retaining locator bolts. Um, it said that we needed to cut some of the studs that were already in there. However, I've not done that because there wouldn't have been enough thread left to put the nuts on in certain things. So had to be a little bit creative, but got there in the end. It has taken about six hours to get to this stage. Next stage is to put the double seat back on. 
and hopefully it'll all work. Here we go. <laughs> Slide down side, short ass people. Can't reach the can't floor. Reach the floor. Oh. I just can't reach the floor. Do what happens if it goes back? Will it go back? This way. Back slide. You want that little footstool? There we go. So a few days after we've done the swivel seat and we've both recovered from the stresses of trying to do it and today I'm going to give a brief demonstration on how we move the swivel from being front facing to reverse facing. Start by lifting the seat bases up and now if the camera looks in we can see we have four locking handles, each with pins in them, and then two main pins. We start off by removing the pin from the locking mechanism, lift the pin out, move to the side, and then turn it, lift it up, turn again, and now that one is in the unlocked position. We do the same for this one. So we take the pin out, then do it, we lift it up, turn it again so it's locked, and so on. The seat is now unlocked at the four points and we just take out the two remaining pins. We now need to close the seat base so that we can then swivel the seat. Now we're going to the rear of the vehicle I will explain how we manoeuvre the seat so that we can spin it 180. Now we're going to have a go at moving the swivel now that it is all um, done. There are a set of instructions which we will read out to you and we'll follow those step by step and hopefully it should work quite well. Right, so position yourself behind the seat and grasp it at each side below cushion level. Okay. Now, slightly rota rotate anti-clockwise, slide slightly towards the passenger door and then turn 90 degrees, pull back slightly to the driver's side and then complete the action by turning it at 180 degrees. And there is a YouTube clip for additional help. It says here, once tried a couple of times, it is a really easy operation to carry out. got the seat into place it is uh, has to be locked down at two points now the instructions say it has to lock down at the front near side and the rear offside I'll show you those two points where it has been locked in they lock in in different places to when it's forward facing but there is quite a clever little way of working it out 
we can't at the camera in there clearly to see it but there is two little cutouts that are down there that line up and when they're lined up we, it allows you to get to this one which is the rear offside lot and then there is another one at the front to cut out here in the base plate and then another cut out at the top once those two are in line that means then we can lock it off and then it's locked again here at the front near side so it just locks with two points and then again you would push the pins through we're now going to do the reverse process of that so we'll unlock these get the handles and locating pins out of the way we're going to put the seat bottoms back into place now it's unlocked and then spin it around Now we've got the seat back into its forward facing position we're going to drop the four uh, locking bolts into place and secure them. One tip that I found works really well is that if you find a struggle to get these locked into place is if you undo them so that they go up and down and if they don't fit in just give the frame a shake going forwards and backwards then that finds the locations really well. So it goes in and then we do a clockwise turn to lock and then the pin goes in. The same there, there. It will help if you lock it make sure that the, the the hole on the locking handle and the hole in the frame is on the right side otherwise your pin won't go in i've done the same with that one as well So those are now locked and then we put the two remaining pins in. There we go. And that's it. Done. I hope you found that informative. Yes, it took us a while to get the seat base fitted and levelled and then secured, but it has been worthwhile and we've got to grips with the way the swivel works quite quickly. Once you've done it a few times, it makes common sense as long as you rotate it in the right direction. There have been a couple of times when we've gone the wrong direction to start with and then you get stuck, but as long as you follow the instructions, it is very straightforward. If you've got any questions, then please do leave some comments below. If you like the video, please also subscribe to it. And thank you for taking the time in watching another video from Custom to Camper.